Hello everybody, it's Ruth from Dressage Anywhere here and today we have got Kelly, aka Mrs Equidance, from Equidance. Welcome! <laughs> Hi, it's really nice to be here, lovely to chat to you. Lovely to have you. Now, Equidance are sponsoring our Advanced Medium class um, this month for the Music Festival and there are some amazing prizes on offer um, from them so we're really looking forward to that and they've got some lovely rosettes as well. Um, but we thought we'd just catch up with Kelly and find out more about Equidance, uh, where they started, where they're going, what they're up to um, and you know see where it, where it takes us. So Great. start off with, can you tell us more about how you guys, well it's you and, and Tony isn't it? Yeah, we, we, we're very much a team on this. Um, basically, I, I, I've been interested in dressage and I've ridden all of my life and, and dressage is my passion because I'm, I'm, I'm a failed eventer. I'm not very good at eventing at all. <laughs> so, um, and because I've got children now, I'm not brave enough to, uh, to, to jump things that don't fall down. Um, so I, 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 do, I do love my dressage though. And um, when I met Tony, Tony was very unhorsey. Uh, Tony was terrified of horses. Oh, bless him. And um, yeah, I, I took him along to Dressage Christmas at the Winter Championships. Yeah. And he sat in the indoor arena at Hartbury and it was freestyle on. I, I don't even remember what level freestyle we were watching. And he just sat there and was, I was horrified. And he just went, what is this? And I was like, <laughs> what? You know, bearing in mind, there's quite a few people around. I'm like, shut up, what? And he's like, it's this music. I don't, he's like, who's playing this? What, what is this? And I went, no, I was like, shut up, Tony. I was like, people pay a lot of money for their music. And he went, my God, this is awful. Oh, this is you. dreadful. And he's, he has very acute, um, uh, very acute ears. It's just what he can hear is, is unbelievable. Uh, and I was like, okay, look, if you think you can do better, do better. And he was like, yeah, uh, all right. So he went home and he was looking on Facebook. He was like, okay, I need to, I need to make some music. Um, all right, let's go and have a look through some, some top name riders and see if anyone wants some music. And actually the rider that, that, that first went, yeah, all right, I'll let you have a go, was Nicola Buchanan. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Nicola was like, okay, great. Yeah, I've got a, I'm doing a Grand Prix gala at Hartbury. Um, basically fill your boots Fantastic. and he did and his first ever piece he made was a flipping grand prix um and it was a massive learning curve for him so he literally went from zero to the top of equestrian sport wow. in literally in, in in a matter of days that's incredible um, it was nuts and he did a really good game of thrones arrangement for, for nicola for her um uh for her horse that's now retired bless him but uh, yeah, it was, it was brilliant. So from that, he was like, right, okay, I want, to ha I want everyone to have access to this. I don't want to charge stupid prices because do you know what, equestrians, we yeah. pay enough for stuff. Do we, yeah. we pay enough? He's like, I, I don't want to be greedy. I'm not, he's not a breadhead. So let's do something. Let's charge a fair price, but knock out an absolutely world-class standard product that can't be beaten. Yeah. So I was like, you know what, that's a formula, that's a very good formula for business. So he started off working, I'm sorry that I'm, it's a bit of a monologue. Mm, this is great. And, um, oh, thank you. Um, so he started working on his own and, and I mean, I'm self-employed with, with my own, with my own company. Um, but he was, he got so busy so quickly that when we bought our house here and we moved in, he was just getting so bogged down with the minute eye of the social media and the admin and dealing with, you know, being able to offer that real quality service to customers, that it was actually affecting the amount of work he could do with the editing. So I took that from him and went, okay, do you know what? Stay in your studio, because we've got a dedicated studio here. Stay in your studio. I can actually lock the door on him if I want to, uh, because he talks to himself <laughs> constantly. He literally is a constant Tony monologue when he's editing. So I can just lock the doors on him, and I can deal with the customers, I can deal with the emails, I can do the, the website updates, and I can still do my own business as well and, and stuff, but I can, I can take that from him because it, it kind of interferes with his creative process a little bit. So, yeah. so basically that is where Equidance came from. It came from Tony feeling he could do better and then realizing that we work very, very well as, as part of a team. So yeah. uh, I actually do less and less on my on my my other business and more and more 
with um with with, with equidance wow, that's fantastic oh hello there is the dogs it's literally in, it's literally insane now, and i built the website that's running now i built that two years ago for him yeah. and literally i mean what he started with was good in the bit it was okay in the beginning but we had to completely uh, overhaul it because the amount of hits we were getting and the amount of orders we were getting it was just it was like okay we seriously got to upgrade because what we're actually our, our showcase our mm. our kind of um, front door to clients yeah. wasn't matching the product we were providing so we're like right okay what can we do to make it better and kind of that's the way we think what not so much of how can we charge more how can we yeah. make more money we are very much focused on what can we give back so we're just about to build an app but hopefully we can get loads of people to download that will offer free training music so we can upload playlists regularly so that people don't have to spend money on like buying music that they that's freely available so we'll just be able to put it together so and say for example we'll do like um, a cob week and we'll have some music there that's suitable for cobs and then actually we might do some interval training the next week so we'll have some some canter work with some walk work and then some more can so we can just really play that idea and keep people engaged and keep people forward thinking but because a lot of people want that people want the training music and we think well we don't really want to we don't really want to be charging for that i mean we can do it we do some bespoke training music for some of our clients mm. because they want it played by you know um because tony's a music producer he's got access to 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 industry session players and wow. and in so we can we do that too but we want to be able to offer that for free because not everyone can afford to, to, to no keep, absolutely to that sounds like such a great thing to do because um there's a few people at the yard where i keep my horses that have a little bluetooth speaker and and have some music playing as they're they're schooling they're training and they say you know it just helps them to find their rhythm and relax so that sounds like a really invaluable tool actually it's great and, and, and i think sometimes people can get stuck into listening to the same music and not that that's a bad thing but it's a bit i guess a bit like riding to the same dressage test over and over again you start to preempt the cadence changes in the music and it has to have a psychological impact and that has to have an impact in your riding if you're always anticipating the chorus in sledgehammer you know what you're gonna <laughs> and that's, that's gonna affect what your horse feels i think um you know ultimately so i think being able to change the music that you ride to is important yeah and 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 speaking of music that you're you're riding to i've seen on on social media that um there were a number of riders at the nationals last week that had music from you guys um that must be amazing to hear the the music that you've created for those riders hear that at, at a national event how how does that feel it's we love it now we don't ever claim the success of, of our clients though do you know what we've got we had our clients did brilliantly at the nationals absolutely brilliantly and we're made up yeah. it's their wins do you know what yeah. it's, not, it's not it's not our wins they're not equidance wins you know we could sit there and we could you know tell you what our clients have done and this and that but do you know what it's theirs and we aren't gonna dine out on their success yeah, we are absolutely made up to share and to fist bump them because if they've if they've come in as champion reserve champion if they've gone out and they've done their first prelim and they've got 65 percent or do you know what we absolutely love it all levels you know we don't get any more excited over a grand prix than we do over someone doing their first prelim we just love it when people message us and go oh my god look what we've done <laughs> that is that's the best part of what we do because we basically we trade in smiles <laughs> yes, we have. Yes, we make wicked music, and Tony is just a genius level editor. He's a bit, he's a bit mental with it, and probably a little bit unhinged at times. But he is an absolute genius with what he can achieve. But that's not the best part. The best part is the feedback, and our clients are really good at coming back to us and letting us know what they've done. And it's just, how can you not love what you do when you know that's just amazing? It's great. Yeah, no, I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, so you, you run a series of clinics, don't you? I've seen those advertised. Um, how, how do those work and, and how do people find out about them? 
Oh, that's, yeah, that's a good question. Obviously, it was difficult. I mean, over uh, the, the, the whole COVID scenario, we, we obviously we, we couldn't do clinics at all. Um, but they're really popular. I guess because because Tony's so smiley. You know, he, he doesn't he doesn't suffer with the ups and downs that, that we women do. He's always happy. So the women love dealing with him, and the the, the guys that we have riding love dealing with him because he's just Mr. Personable. Um, and they we run slightly differently to other producers. We don't do the floor plans on the day. Okay. Now, the reason we don't do that is because it's it gives you a time constraint. Now, a floor plan is really important. How can you nail that down in 30 minutes? I think so, uh, what we do is we have our floor plans either, they work through with a trainer that knows them and knows the horse, or they can get a floor plan designed with um, our with our Grand Prix rider, Steph Erdley. She does all of our floor plans for us. Um, and she will have a chat with the rider, find out what their strengths and weaknesses are, and, mm. and she'll design the first level floor plan for them to go away and ride and they come back and they whatever tweaks they need so they have the time to digest the movements and to, to know if it works or not um, and then when they're ready they then come along to a clinic they ride their floor plan with Tony Mr Happy who makes everyone feel brilliant <laughs> um, they pop the horse away and then they come and sit down and they talk through their music ideas Mm -hmm. Again, we don't do this on the horse because sometimes people need longer than 20 or 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the horses aren't used to having music played. So we take, you know, it's, it's a, sometimes there's a safety element as well. So rather than just blasting music into an arena with, with a horse that may not be accustomed, mm -hmm. we just let them put the horse away and come and sit down in a no pressure environment. If they can't decide on the sort of theme they want, then do you know what? doesn't matter. They can chat to me the next day uh, and we'll go through the process until they love the music choices. Yeah. And that's the most important thing is, we yeah. don't tell the clients what to write to. Yeah. They literally, they, they, they might come with some pretty bizarre ideas sometimes, and that's fine. We will always try and nail that down. Mm -hmm. But we will send communication back and forth, ideas, they might love the walk, they might love the canter, but they, boy, they wanna bin the trot because it's terrible. That's fine. You know, I'm, We'll just make sure we send messages back and forth to keep the communication free so that we get that email that goes, oh my God, that's perfect. Yeah. That, that's the moment we edit. So the clinic is about finding out about the client, mm -hmm. about get, getting the video done and finding out the ideas that they want for the music. Yeah. Um, so again, we don't charge a premium for our clinics either. We don't we don't ramp the price up. Uh, we simply cover costs for Tony to go and film. Yeah. And people have the opportunity to have a really low pressure environment. And we find it really, really works. So mm. We asked our clients what they wanted from clinics. And actually, that was the feedback that we got. Wow. And what's the, what's the strangest music request you've ever had? <laughs> if you can think oh, of one. <clears throat> um, well, you know, I'm, I'm not... Uh, I'm not a massive, a massive fan of, of like um, jungle music, I suppose, like from, from dance. So we, we, get to, we get quite a lot of requests for music that's the wrong tempo. Yeah. Now, people are very, uh, I use the term people generically, obviously, because it, not, it doesn't occur to, not for everybody, but a lot of people are very good at timing their canter and their walk. Yeah. They can go, yeah. that's my canter, right? Yeah. It's 95 to 100 beats per minute. When you ask most riders to tell you what their trot tempo is, no. most riders will go, <laughs> and you're like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot, a lot quicker than you imagine. So I will say probably 80% of people that come and go, I would love this for my trot music. Actually, most of the time, they imagine their trot being a lot slower than it actually is. Yeah. That doesn't, I suppose that doesn't really answer your question because we don't really get very bizarre requests for music. Yeah. We find that people from, or, or people that ride native horses, so like your PREs, your Highlands, at Welsh, like to have music that is indigenous. Yeah. So a lot, a lot of people that ride Portuguese horses, they, they're coming on a Lusso, they want Portuguese music. Um, and, uh, you know, we do quite a lot of Scottish Cayleys for the Highland horses and, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of um, like Gaelic music for, for our Irish clients. And that is a re that's really nice because it does add another level of, um, of 
choosing music. So it's not just about what's popular. It's not just about um, having something that the Royals um, uh, Philharmonic Orchestra have done. You have to then really think outside the box and go, wow, I've suddenly got to go and find a whole load of Celtic music for this Welsh section D. Um, yeah, it, it kind of takes your, your music choice off on several different yeah, tangents. Definitely. And I guess it kind of makes it more sort of personal for that, that rider and, and more unique for that, that horse as well, doesn't it? So you can produce something that's quite special. Exactly, um, yeah, exactly that. You know, it would be very easy for us to tell clients what to ride to, yeah. but it would be music that just sounds the same. Yeah. And we want them to, I want our riders to squeeze every last mark out because of course we want them to win because winning riders will advertise for us. Yeah. So, I don't know that, you know, so it's not completely altruistic, but we want those riders to just squeeze every half mark out because they just love what they're riding to. It's yeah. really important. Yeah, definitely. So do, do you run the clinics around the country or is it just to your specific area or you do them no, all over the place? Well, I sent Tony all over the place. He was supposed to be going to Scotland next month, but they're still on local lockdown. So we've actually had to postpone that clinic. He does Northern and Southern Ireland. He does uh, Scotland probably twice a year. He's always over on the, the East coast of England. Uh, we don't have too much up in the Northeast because that's pretty well covered with another music producer right now. That's fine. Um, but we go, oh, he goes all over the country. Wow. Wow. I send him everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I do all the clinic booking. So literally, I'll be like that. Uh, really sorry, but um, yeah, you're 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 going to a uh, Hertfordshire next month. <laughs> he loves it, and we have some. We have a lot of regular um, yeah. host yeah. clinics, oh, like Sw nice. Swallowfield Equestrian with Joe Swain. We do one there nearly every three months, and the mm. Croft with regulars there, mm. and it's really lovely because. We get some proper fantastic trainers yes. that can give us regular feedback, and you know they then do the floor plans for their clients. So it's um it's it's just another wonderful way to 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 work and to help support um, local business as well because you know we can give their clients some amazing music and and they they send us some brilliant clients too. So it's a very good symbiotic relationship. Absolutely, yeah. I... Um, you see something different from different floor plan designers. We have some yeah. that come in directly from Steph Coxford as well. She, she designs for some of our more northern clients. Yeah. And it's lovely to see the, how different trainers yeah. make different floor plans. And the different things, the different lines that they can encourage people to ride from prelim up to Grand Prix, it's, it's really the, the, I guess the, the ante has been upped floor yeah. plan design just as much as it has for for music mm -hmm. and designers have to be you know i don't i don't design for equi dance and tony doesn't design so do you know what that's, a, that's something mm -hmm. we don't really get involved in and it's really interesting to see how that's evolving from down the center line hall to x continue in trot track left mm -hmm. oh no we don't people don't do that anymore they're they're coming in they're halting at d then they're doing a half 10 and they're going the other way it's like that's brilliant i love the way I love the way these, these trainers are thinking right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I did my first dressage to music in 2005, right? And I had, um, it was just a terrible program on my computer because I was too mean. I was a student then at Hartbury. I was too mean to pay anyone to do my music. So I did it myself. And thinking about now, I know it didn't fit any of the paces, but I did put it together myself. But I think that, and that is for me the turning point mm. when people could download and do it themselves and then realize. The limitations of doing it yourself yeah but but with learning the limitations comes learning the opportunity and Definitely. you suddenly go actually i don't have to have this music it doesn't have to sound like this oh my goodness me i can use that song that's number one at the moment yeah. you know it, and then oh i can use the soundtrack to moana because my 12 year old daughter loves it actually i've got a moana soundtrack as well and i'm 40. <laughs> Do you know what? Anything is possible. We have a, we've got one client who, who's based in Bath. She's a regular client. That she gets me to do. I do have to do voiceovers. So like at the at the halt and at the beginning and end, but I will normally have a phrase that I'll have to do sometimes in a character voice or one. And do you know what? That again, it's for her daughter, and they just love it. So we we quite often will will put you know if if a client wants some lyrics in because perhaps the instrumental is a little bit flat. Well, do you know what? We'll go and find the a cappella track. Tony will will download it, make sure it's in the right key and the right 
I, actually, I don't know how he does it, but somehow he puts them together. <laughs> yeah, he'll just take some of the chorus lyrics out, whack it in with the instrumental, and it just gives the mediums a bit of extra punch. So I think when, sorry, I, I kind of digress then, but when people realized that there was so much more you could do with the music, mm. that's the turning point, yeah. because what was, what was going on before, it's not good enough now. Do you know what? The standard has increased massively. It has, hasn't it? It is incredible and it's fantastic to watch. Um, now, if somebody wanted to find out more about your clinics, how would they go about that? Do you, are they on your website or your Facebook page? Yeah. Mace, mainly on our Facebook page. We, we used to have a map on the website which showed where we were all over the country, but actually it was a massive headache to keep it updated and people just didn't look at it. So we've, we've kind of binned that. We try and list them on the website, but everything is always up to date on our Facebook page. Brilliant. Oh, I've got an interesting question here. Actually, we might have touched on this a little bit, actually. Um, but it's about balancing um, the flow of a test with the inventiveness that we were talking about. Because I think there could be a danger of having too many music edits or too many yeah. different movements or something too complex. And it's just how, how do you go about kind of balancing all of that so that you're maximising your opportunity for, for good marks from the judges? Well, obviously flow is key. And the way you get good flow is not so much about changes within the pace or the work that you do within the pace. It's changes between the paces. So if you come in and you go trot, halt, that's fine. And then you go trot for 30 seconds, walk, and then trot, and then canter, and then back to trot, and then you do some more canter, you're never going to get the flow that you need. Yeah. So I think that's why it's key to have a proper designer do your floor plan or a trainer or a judge that understands the flow of freestyle because for the music to really make sense you need like a beginning a middle and you need a resolve as well so it's really nice if we can start the music and and it's quite soft and melodic and we need to build to the medium paces obviously it's different at prelim because you don't get mediums but that has its um we deal with that slightly differently, which I can, I'll go into in a moment. But anything that's got medium paces, well, we, need, we, we want to be able to accent that within the music. And also lateral work. You know, if someone's doing uh, a, a shoulder in and they want it annotated, well, Tony will move the bars of the music around to make sure that he can, he doesn't just get a song, whack it in where the, where the medium paces are and then start it at a random point. No, no, it has to start at the point he likes it at. Then he'll put the medium in and then he'll kind of take the bar, literally mm. how he moves it around is unrecognizable um, so that it fits. And then he's got a, an ending as well. So then just chop the music off or fade it out. That, that's mm. not good enough anymore. No. He literally recreates the song from scratch. Um, and that is where the flow comes in. So you've got your trot nice and gentle building up to your medium trot, da, 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 and then it resolves down and then you've got a pace change. What, and then we're gonna have that journey all over again for the canter. Sometimes it can, it can look really impressive to have your extended or medium paces at the very beginning. Mm. But actually in terms of music, it can sometimes, you've got a crescendo right at the beginning of your music. And sometimes it can leave us with nowhere to go or, or mm. make it more difficult to have a great resolve with the music. I mean, he always, he, Tony will always nail it, but he always prefers to have like mediums and extensions towards the end of the trot or canter section so that he's got the journey with the music. Yeah, yeah. That's when we speak to our clients, that, that for me is the best time. When, when I have my, my first 15, 20 minutes or however long the conversation lasts, sometimes it could be like an hour. And we ask, I ask questions. So I want to know yeah. what feel they want from the music. No, it's not just about, what music do you want? Because most people go, um, oh, oh, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. But that's really common. You're like, that's absolutely fine. So let's start with what music don't you want? Yes. And people go, oh my God, I don't want jazz. Uh, I don't want, you know, that's when you get a lovely, great big list of things that they don't want to write to. Yeah. So then you're like, okay, so we're kind of left with pop. And we're, let, you know, and I, then you say, well, do you like the sound of the violin? Do you like a saxophone? No, I hate a saxophone. Brilliant. 
And there's the series of questions and asking the feel that they want. Because some people want something that makes them smile. They want, you know, mm. a, lot of, a lot of people will want something that's emotive. You know, I want the judges to tap along and know the music. Yeah. So then that's really important because there's no gray area between people that like the music to be recognizable and people that don't. Mm. You know, if you want the music recognizable, nothing that I come up that's generic is going to cut the mustard. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, because it, it's important to some people, not to everybody. You know, some people at Grand Prix want the judges to know the music and they love riding to Queen and ABBA and stuff that's current, you know, and that's great. Yeah. Some people like something that's as unique as we can possibly get it, even yeah. at all levels. And that's the most important thing for us is what feel does the client want from the music? Do you want the judge to be like, oh my God, so we can use something that's emotive and it will make you almost cry to watch the horse go into free walk? Or do you want something that's going to make someone smile because we've used the Muppets theme tune? Do you know, it's finding out how somebody is wired and how we can reflect that music in their personality as well. That to me is, is really key. And that's the difference between nailing it or being an almost there. Yeah, absolutely. That's brilliant. So where, where can we go to find out more about you guys? Where, where are you on every social media page and your website and everything? Oh, well, we're, we're mostly active on Facebook. We're very active on Facebook. Our, our page and our freestyle uh, group is also really, really busy. We don't tend to advertise much on the freestyle group. We leave it for people to just chat about things that they like and, and don't like and how can they do a different floor plan and stuff. But our, our Facebook group is very good for our events. We do Instagram as well. I'm not brilliant at Instagram, but it is there. Um, and our website, www.equidance.co.uk. Um, that's where you, you, all our orders come through the website. Um, but, but mainly the, the Facebook page, it has all the info on the live shows that we do. Um, it has info on discounts that we might add or, or the clinics that we do. We update that as regularly as we possibly can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. There was one thing I wanted to ask you about, and that was the Equidance Lorry. Tell me more about this. The Equidance Lorry is amazing. Well, actually, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's my lorry that uh, Tony just uses as a commuter vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's, basically, it's, just a, it's just an expensive advert, you know? And, but um, I, I, had a, I had a trailer, which... Um, the trailer was wonderful, but I, I needed to either do my trailer license or my HGV. So do you know what we went for? We went for the, the, um, the HGV. Oh, brilliant. It, it's, a much, it's a much better experience, but it is, it is phenomenal. What Tony has done with that, with that lorry yeah. is old. It's a 1996, I think it is. So it's an old, it's an old man, but it's in really good nick. So, and he's completely gutted the interior. Mm -hmm. so we've had a sort of full respray and everything so he can edit now wherever he goes I mean he was down um at Anna Miller's yard obviously down with Sophie and, and all that at the weekend he was editing down there you know because oh. he, he just take his work with him yeah um, and that's just that's that's brilliant that he can do that yeah so how are you going to transport your horses <laughs> in the back is still the, the as Tony calls it the horse toilet <laughs> Basically, basically from the groom's door backward is my domain and from the groom's door forward is Tony's so I don't really need the living as long as I can get my horses in the back I'm, I'm happy with that. That sounds like a fair swap. <laughs> it is actually yeah 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 it's 50-50 it's, it's owns so we pretty much we split the lorry in half. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant well it has been an absolute pleasure to catch up with you today Kelly thank you so much for joining us um, I will add all the links of where to find you in uh, a post. Um, with this video shortly but thank you no that's great Ruth it's been absolute an absolute pleasure thanks very much